All right, guys, it's uh, been a little bit since I've done a video, but I uh, decided to do one today, and it's on relocating the ECU for the 04 GTO to the kick panel. Um, did a lot of research on this before I went at it. I saw people saying this only takes like, oh, hour and a half, under two hours. Somebody said 30 minutes. I don't know how that's possible. It seems like a little more involved than that to me. It took me probably at least two hours to get to this point, but um, I guess here's where I'll start. Uh, these are the connectors to the ECU. These two big ones, blue and the green. ECU typically sits right here. Um, I actually got it out. It's held in by two bolts and one's here. You have to move, first of all, the coolant tank to get access to it. You remove this bolt here and this one over here. That's a little tougher to get to, but once you get to it, you get the ECU out. And I'll just show it to you real quick. I have it in the car. I gotta get that ready. But there it is. And it just sits in the case and you can see those bolt holes how it just sits in there and bolts to that side but it's right near the the headers or exhaust exhaust manifolds dealing with a lot of heat and honestly it probably would never cause an issue so i was mostly doing this for space and in case i ever decide to swap out the shorty headers for the um uh long tubes but before i got that whole harness out um this here this bracket was on the side of the kick panel and it was being held up there like that against it um, I couldn't figure out how to get it out at first it was frustrating me and I asked somebody on the Facebook group and they let me know that uh, it's actually you have to when this is up I had to, and it's very weird now, so I don't even see why it would be holding on on this side, but I had to reach in with a screwdriver and hit that flat tab right there and push that, and it's not even making sense to me. Oh, that's because I have to. It was back like this. Okay. Yeah, now it makes sense. And that tab, let me see if I can focus. It was in that hole. There's it's sunny out. The sun's beaming right on. I don't even know if this is picking up, but you hit that flat tab. And that releases it. I'll have to sew my head a little bit. Um, that gets that bracket out. This bracket holds the, uh, you can see if I flip it around, throttle position controller, which I have to remove from this bracket. And I already removed this, which actually sits in there like that. It has a little lid, and that's called the uh, powertrain interface module. Um, I'm actually going to put the lid back on. Well, first I'm going to take the throttle position controller out. And I'm going to trim this whole bracket up, leaving just this box right here for the uh, powertrain interface uh, module, or PTIM, PIM, whatever you want to call it. But I'll trim everything around it outside of this box, leaving just the box. And then when you're left with just the box, which is, you know, roughly this big, like that's the cap, it's gonna go right in there. And then this ECU is gonna go right up there. But after I unplugged whatever connectors were here in the kick panel, I pulled the harness through. And that actually wasn't as easy as it sounds. Uh, because it has this rubber grommet that was facing you and people were like oh yeah that just pulls off well I couldn't pull it off with just my hands I had to get back inside the car on the firewall and you have this grommet I guess we'll call this the plastic grommet and then this is the rubber grommet the plastic grommet I had to from the inside hit three tabs which were on the bottom and that allowed me to push the bottom of this out. Then I had to reach above it and you got the same three tabs on the top. So you get your hands on them. You could do it one at a time and kind of ease it out. It's not particularly super easy, but you could do it. You just got to work at it. That allowed me to kind of push the rubber grommet, which is on in the engine bay, back out so that I could get the whole 
harness out, which I did, and you know, I was careful, and I of course had to disconnect all the uh, wires um, from the uh, ECU. I had to disconnect all the connectors and all before I could take the, the harness out of that hole in the firewall. Then I was able to, well, I had to take the connector off the bottom of the coolant tank. This was a real problem, and I, I might probably didn't even have to take this off, but at the bottom of the um, brake reservoir, or I guess the brake master cylinder, maybe that is, there's that connector and that sensor. And it seemed like it was glued on. I, got, I had a guy do clutch, install clutch for me before. I don't know if it was glued from the factory like this. You can see how the one side, it was like glued and broke. And I only have one prong left in there. Now, this is only a one wire thing and the wire's on the side of the prong. So I might be okay. Um, I almost had like a little panic attack when I broke it yesterday because I'm not that good with electrical connectors and soldering and that kind of thing to wire a new pigtail on or whatever. And I was like, oh my God, why am I getting into this? This job's harder than I thought. And I was freaking out. And uh, I kind of looked into it and it's just like a, it's like a brake pressure sensor. I, I thought I might need it for the actual brakes to work, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. It's not like I'll lose power braking without that working. Even if it doesn't work, I might just get a, a warning light that I might have to try to jump or get rid of somehow or replace the, the pigtail to get working again but yeah I don't know what the deal is with that why it was kind of glued in there and I hope it just works when I plug this all back together well I hope everything works when I plug this back together since um, you know I'm dealing with all electrical connections and hope I didn't mess up something with the computer or who knows what so it's kind of a little risky but I'm the type of person where once I get my mind set to something I'm gonna keep looking into it and looking into it until I actually do it uh, or else I'm just going to obsess and keep researching, researching, researching and um, rereading stuff. And so I figured I might as well just do this and clean up this area so that I have, you know, more room down there. Um, I took off the clutch reservoir, as you can see, just to get to the side to make some room in there. Um, I took off the horn, which attaches to that bracket right there. So I don't... I wanted to take off the actual tab, but it's a weird Torx with like a hole in the middle. I don't have anything that I can use on that, I don't think. So uh, I left that little tab there and I'll just put the horn back on. I have that over there. That's what the horn looks like and it just attaches on. Um, so what work did I do to the harness so far? And I followed these, I followed a lot of instructions on LS1 GTO, um, but the bulk of it, a really good, um, illustrated instructions came from alice1.com au the australian guys and a guy named sonny wrote up these instructions that i happen to find pretty useful it's not like every step but it's a lot of the steps you kind of have to connect the dots at some parts but um you can email me and i can send this to you it's a pdf attachment um if you're planning on doing this i know the car is old maybe some people still want to do it they can so anyhow, uh, what did I do? So I was able to, once I got the harness through and out, um, you can actually take apart that little plastic grommet here. You just put a little screwdriver into a couple tabs in here. I don't know if it's really gonna show it, but uh, that hole right there, you can slide a screwdriver up. There's little release tabs. You only really have to do one of them, I believe. And this breaks in half. You can see right there at that. And it breaks in half so you can take it off and move it wherever you want. It was actually, where was it? It was over here. Cause this was the, the only connectors that were going into the cabin. So you had the rubber grommet that was, went, went right around that right there. You could see how I cut that. And then that, uh, this, plastic on it went right behind that or basically in front of it I guess it would have been like down here because uh, it's gonna go back through the firewall apologize for the uh, the trash men I'm gonna let them pass all right the trash men passed it's been a uh, hectic out here on this Friday and the trash men recycle men the lawnmower men all going out there uh, right as I went to start the video the lawnmower came by so I had to stop and restart but anyhow um, 
yeah that plastic grommet uh, so I, I I cut the rubber grommet as you can see I had to cut the center out of it because I still wanted it to be tight so I didn't cut any much more than I needed and I used a razor blade and was just careful because you don't want to sever electrical connections and then uh, like I said I undid the plastic grommet so I can move that from here up to here because uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all this stuff all this rest of the wires and and dump it into there what I actually did on the rubber grommet too was I cut two so basically I had to fit all these connectors through that rubber grommet two were already through it because the two were already in the cabin and they are already these two are already through that rubber grommet but I had to get the rest of these through um, basically the two ECU and the coolant sensor uh, had to get through there so that's why I notched the rubber grommet and uh, that allowed me to get these three connectors through I did the two ECU first and then because it's small I did the coolant one third I'm no longer gonna be able to use the coolant because that's gonna go too far down this coolant um, pigtail it's gonna get too far into the cabin to get it back and if you look here one of the wires goes forward to the uh, ECU connector and then the other one was goes back so it's not like I can really I don't think reach it back into the cabin to, to to reach the coolant tank anymore that I'm using um, I did convert to a 0506 cooling system so it's not a big deal to turn that off um, I don't even know how useful it is anyway because it's not a closed system so uh, I still use that reservoir tank but it's, it's set up differently it doesn't it's using all the 0506 hoses and I only have coolant going into the top like you would any other um, you know uh, open system so that's kind of how I do it uh, so it's not a big deal I, I think I have to jump that and I read I could just um, I'll be doing this shortly but I'll just put a bobby pin in there uh, or something like that turn it 90 degrees and I think that what's called jumping the connection and hopefully it takes away that light so we'll see that that'll be going into the cabin so basically all this stuff now uh, I'm at the point where I'm gonna feed it into the cabin um, I did have to do some work on the harness so here is the horn and the horn I wanted to have everything fit back up nicely up here and seal up nice and still use these grommets so uh, in order to do that, I had to pull the horn back on the other side of them uh, So it goes back into the you know into the engine bay So I had to kind of break loose some of this tape and pull that horn back Which isn't a big deal. You just kind of pulling it back from like uh, it was somewhere like down around here back up to there and then I taped everything back up good and I don't know if I have it exactly where it needs to be but uh, it's close and I can always fuss with it later um, I went maybe back a little farther than I needed to just in case and I can always maybe come back another what inch or two or whatever to here I don't know exactly where all this is gonna fall once I push it back I've tried to estimate how far I am but it's really hard to tell so that's my next step so I'll probably pause this or make another video of uh, everything when it's back together cross my fingers hopefully everything works out um, I think that's about it, but uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know. As always, like and subscribe. See you slops.